my crafty and interactive card fans. Welcome back to the MFT YouTube channel. I'm stopping in today to share an interactive project that I created using the Movin' and Groovin' Slimline Dynamics and the High Flying Adventure stamp set. I'm so happy with how this turned out and can't wait to share with you all the tips and tricks I learned along the way. So let's get to it, shall we? I started off by ink blending some fluffy clouds onto a four inch by seven inch smooth white panel using the Slimline Cloud Edges stencil and some Summer Splash dye ink. Then I die cut that panel and another smooth white panel using the stitched rectangle die from the Slimline Starter Set Dynamics. Next, I die cut two pull tabs, two tabs, and two half inch circles from Lemon Drop cardstock using the Move In and Groove and Slimline Dynamics. I also die cut a pull tab collar from Tex Weight printer paper. I'll adhere the two pull tabs and the tabs together with my tape runner. This will ensure that these interactive components will be sturdy enough for our card. You'll notice that one end of each of the tabs has an embossed circle on it. I always adhere the tabs together so that the embossed circles are on the same end. But honestly, it doesn't make a difference in assembling the card. Next, I'm aligning the Movin' and Groovin' Slimline channel and edge dies onto the ink blended panel. And once I have them in position, I'll secure the edge die in place with some temporary tape and I'll die cut it off camera. Then I'll adhere the upper portion of that panel to the smooth white panel using my tape runner adhesive. This will give me a full slimline panel that I can build my mechanism on. And then I'll hide it with the other portion of that ink blended panel later on in the video. Now I can align and position the Movin' and Groovin' Slimline Channel Die underneath that curvy edge. I'll secure it in place with some temporary tape and die cut it off camera. Now let's build our mechanism. I'm positioning the pull tab behind the curvy channel, making sure to center it on the channel opening. Then I'll secure the ends of my pull tab collar using my liquid glue pen. And I'll slide it onto the end of the pull tab to secure it in place. I secured the pull tab in place with a piece of temporary tape before I adhered the pull tab collar to the back of the panel. This is the best way I've found to keep the pull tab aligned when being pulled, and it's so easy to do. Next, I adhered some double-sided tape to both sides of two spin and slide elements. I'm removing the liner paper from one end of the element, and I'll adhere that to the embossed circle on the assembled tab. And again, it doesn't matter which side of the tab you adhere the disc to. Then I'll slip that spin and slide disc through the hole of the pull tab and I'll secure it in place with one of the half inch circles. Now I can slide the end of the pull tab through the collar and position it so that the spin and slide element extends through the channel on the front. I'll temporarily secure the pull tab in place with some tape while I finish assembling the mechanism. And hopefully you can see that I'm now popping the half inch circle through the channel to the front. This is an important step as this is what will keep the moving tab in place when the pull tab is activated. I've now removed the liner paper from one side of the other spin and slide disc and I'll adhere that through the channel onto the rotating tab. And then I can secure it in place with the other half inch circle. Next, I trimmed an acetate strip that measures a little less than a half an inch wide by about two inches long. I've adhered some quarter inch double sided tape to one end and I'll adhere that to the left half inch circle so that it's perpendicular to the slider channel. Now let's take care of a few of the card details. I stamped one of the sentiments from the Banner Day Sentiment stamp set onto some smooth white cardstock using black hybrid ink. And then I'll use the Banner Flags Dynamics to die cut it off camera. I also die cut the tab for the banner from Lemon Drop cardstock. I'll secure the tab to the banner with my liquid glue pen. And as a quick side note, nicely manicured nails look great, but they're not super functional for dealing with tiny die cuts. Okay, I stamped, colored, and die cut that bunny flying airplane off camera so that I can focus on the interactive details of the card. I want to hide that banner behind the airplane so that it's revealed when I pull on the pull tab. So I'm trying to get an idea of where everything needs to go on the card. Now that I figured out where everything goes, I'll adhere a foam square to the acetate strip, and this is where I'll adhere the airplane. I'll reposition the banner die cut onto the card panel, 
and I'll use my pencil to mark its position. I'll apply some liquid adhesive to the back of the banner and I'll adhere it onto the card panel. As a helpful tip, I've found that the main goal of an interactive card is that everything moves without getting caught up on other elements of the card. This is something I always take into account, but don't always succeed at doing the first time. In this case, I should have glued down the banner tab at the same time that I adhered the banner because it interfered with the movement of the airplane. These are the things that you'll learn by trial and error, hopefully before you have to start all over. I'm securing one end of some red and white baker's twine to the tab as I wanted to have the banner be attached to the airplane when I pull on the tab. The airplane moves, but the banner doesn't, so I thought this was a good solution. I'll secure the other end of the baker's twine to the tail of the airplane with some double-sided tape. It was a little bit of a fussy process to get both ends of the twine attached securely, but the end result was well worth the effort. And you'll notice that I pulled the airplane all the way to the right to figure out how long the baker's twine needed to be before I secured the end to the tail of the airplane. And then I'll trim the excess baker's twine with my scissors. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is when I discovered that the banner tab was interfering with the movement of the airplane. So I'm applying more liquid glue to the tab and pressing it down firmly to keep it from getting caught in the plane's tail. Now that the moving parts are in place, I can trim off the excess acetate strip with my scissors. I've adhered a double layer of foam squares to the bottom of the card panel, making sure not to place any foam squares in areas that will interfere with the movement of the plane, and then I'll secure the other half of the ink blended panel. Before I did that though, you'll notice that I stamped one of the sentiments from the High Flying Adventure stamp set onto the lower right corner of that panel, but I forgot to capture that on camera. I added a single layer of foam squares to the back of the assembled image panel and I'm attaching that to a 7 inch by 8.5 inch lemon drop card base that I've scored at 3.5 inches on the 7 inch side and folded in half. I like to use my Teflon bone folder to perfect the crease of my card bases, especially with the heavier weight card base. And you can see when I tug on the pull tab that bunny flying airplane floats through the air delivering that sweet I miss you message. I added some clouds to the panel for some additional dimensional details, but always made sure to keep them out of the way of the movement of the airplane. This project came out exactly as I had envisioned it. I've listed and linked all of the MFT products that I use below in the video description box and on my blog. I hope you'll give it a try for yourself. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll tune into the MFT YouTube channel again for more crafty videos. Please stay safe and have a wonderful day.